What if great players wore the jerseys they were supposed to? What if lottery balls fell another way? What if the ultimate prize didn't elude great players? Welcome to Big Apple Hockey's NHL What Ifs. In 1982, a nomadic franchise arrived in a permanent location after failed attempts in Kansas City and Colorado. They would rename themselves the New Jersey Devils. Jersey would struggle in their early years, but would acquire a handful of first-round talents in John McLean, Ken Danico, and the little ball of hate named Pat Verbeek. The Devils would spend draft picks on Red Army team players Alexei Kasatanov and Slava Fetisov. But the team had a bigger fish in their sights as they sputtered through their second season in the Garden State. It was a six foot four forward from the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League that scored 184 points in 66 games named Mario Lemieux. The easiest thing to say about Mario Lemieux was that he was a generational talent. And hell, that's a no brainer. But since Wayne Gretzky was never drafted, Mario Lemieux was clearly the best number one overall draft pick of all time. So you had the New Jersey Devils trying to establish themselves as a franchise with young talent and a sprinkling of veterans. In that time, the Devils had planted the seeds to make them a good franchise and be on their way. And then 83-84 comes along. The Pittsburgh Penguins had gone from a good team from the, the 1967 expansion to a bad team in the 1982-83 season and began whispers of the team folding up within a year. The Pittsburgh Penguins already filed for bankruptcy in 1975 when they had $6.5 million worth of debt, which included $500,000 of government taxes. The IRS imposed the lien and padlocked their offices. Fast forward to the 1982-83 season, where the Penguins dropped from a 75-point playoff team to a last place 45 point team. It was in that time the Penguins decided that the best course of action would be for them to tank, though no one would ever admit it. There was a story from coach Lou Angotti that GM Eddie Johnson complained about a 3-1 lead in the first period versus the New York Rangers. He would also trade away their top defenseman, Randy Carlisle, for zero NHL players and sent down goalie Roberto Romano to the AHL when he was playing very well. So you have the Devils coming off a 48-point season versus the Penguins coming off a 45-point season. Rumors had it that the Devils caught wind of the Penguins tanking, but it wasn't exactly like the Devils weren't set up to tank themselves. Wayne Gretzky, nicest guy in all pro sports, called the Devils a Mickey Mouse organization after a 13-4 beatdown in November of 1983. As it turns out, Pittsburgh would lose out to win the Mario Lemieux sweepstakes. Mario would score a goal in his first NHL shot, compile one of the greatest careers in NHL history, win two Stanley Cups, save the Pittsburgh Penguins from moving to another city, and then for good measure, he did it again saving them from bankruptcy and extinction in 2000 after he became part owner of the Pittsburgh Penguins. To add insult to this, Mario would score a goal in five different ways in an NHL game. And the team he did it against, the New Jersey Devils. As for the Devils, their consolation prize was Kirk Muller, who was a pretty good player and was no slouch himself. He'd be part of a pretty good 1984 first round, especially if you look at it today, and would lead the upstart Devils to a little bit of a playoff run in 1988, where they beat the established New York Islanders on the way to the conference finals. But his best success came when he was a Montreal Canadian when they won the Stanley Cup. One could say that the 83-84 season gave birth to the NHL lottery, even though it came 11 years later. The Devils would survive this. 
and recover very well. A decade later, they would win their first Stanley Cup. Oddly, it was when Lemieux took the season off for cancer treatments. And the Devils would go on to win two more in 2000 and 2003. But you really have to wonder, what if the Devils had Mario Lemieux? Especially in the 1988 season, and then in the 90s when they were a defensive juggernaut. But it just wasn't meant to be. If you like that video, we got a lot more. So check out any of these that are right over here. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Mm, your ideas are intriguing to me, and I wish to subscribe to your newsletter.